Time is um, 5.57 on April 24th, 2017. I am luckily, um, I'm lucky enough to be joined here over the phone by John Blazinski, who is the current um, Chief Executive Officer at Elemica in Philadelphia. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, John. No problem, Jack. So if you could tell me a little bit about your current time at Elemica, I believe you've been there for a period of five years. If you could just tell me very briefly what you do there and um, how you handle business. Okay, so Alemica is a software company. We're uh, in the uh, kind of a mid-market software company. We're revenue is just over 50 million. We have uh, 200 plus employees and we serve customers all over the world. We, we, we have offices in Asia, in Europe and uh, North America and we provide software which helps large industrial companies manage their supply chain. So by managing their supply chain, they can get efficiency, uh, financial efficiencies. They can reduce their working capital, and they can save, you know, uh, tens of millions of dollars a year. Perfect. Okay. So now that we know a little bit about what you do now, I'd like to kind of get into more of what I wanted to talk to you about, which is the idea about um, millennial job clinging, which is you know yeah. people born you know after what you guys would call them Generation X is the next generation is millennials. It's yeah. it's briefly um, nineteen eighty six and to the to very pre two thousand I think is what they're categorized as. But so I wanted yeah. to get you know more um, kind of your rise to fame sort of speak. So I know you graduated from King's College in nineteen eighty one with a bachelor's in electrical engineering. Yeah. And then closely followed by that, you worked with Hewitt Packard. For I believe it was five years until 1986. I'm wondering if you can tell me briefly what you did at Hewitt Packard, why you chose, and why you chose to go there immediately after graduation. Okay, um, so when I graduated in, in uh, 1981, I was in a very fortunate position that um, with my particular qualification, which is electronic engineering. Um, there must have been 10 jobs for every graduate leaving college for that particular qualification. It was, it was just a huge boom in computing and uh, less so software, but more computing at that point. So I really had my pick of uh, jobs. Uh, secondly, I'd always wanted to work in the, uh, live and work in the U.S. So after graduating from London, I specifically chose to apply for roles and uh, opportunities in, a, in, in commercial jobs uh, with large U.S. companies who are based in the U.K. So um, I just applied to, to U.S. companies. In fact, they, 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 uh, they came to me at my university because it's where it was well-known for engineering school. Um, so I was fortunate enough to get a, a, a job with HP. And um, initially I was working in England, uh, but they said, you know, like, you know, pretty soon you may be uh, transferred to the U.S. for a period of time. And within probably three or four months of joining the company, I got transferred for 18 months to uh, California, which was not, not exactly a hardship post, uh, where I was uh, working in marketing. Sounds pretty phenomenal. So then after you were at um, HP, HP was kind of your first real exposure to a higher level um, corporate structure. Did you notice anything specific with the hiring process or how you saw your peers get promotions? Anything specific? Um, nothing that I can recall. Um, it was it was based on uh, the, the company is growing very very rapidly at the time, and so there's a lot of job changes. In fact, it wasn't unusual at that point because the company's grown so fast for people to change jobs or get promotion within a year, and that's what happened to me. Within nine months, I got promoted. So within there was a culture within the company to be very focused on what your next job was going to be and try very hard to line that up and you know I, and that's exactly what I wanted to do I wanted to get ahead um, so you know I just happened to be in the right place at the right time and I got a, a, you know uh, as I mentioned within about nine months I'd, be, I'd, I'd spent time in the US I, I came back to the UK and um, they, they they offered me a, a, a promotion so I, I took it um, there was there was a lot of there was a lot of organisational change at the time, and it was driven by the economics of the industry I was in. There was um, you know the industry overall was growing at twenty five percent, so they, you know the company could not at that point they, they, they almost couldn't hire enough people fast enough to uh, to, to meet the demand. So I was, uh, you know again I was in a very fortunate position. 
That sounds pretty lucky as well. So you said that you were always thinking about your next job opportunity. Were you thinking yeah. specifically within Hewitt Packard itself, or you wanted to kind of expand your knowledge and take your next job somewhere else other than Hewitt Packard? <laughs> I, I was very, I was very keen to get ahead within Hewlett Packard. It was very, uh, you know, it's very much, a, 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 you know, a, a go faster culture. Um, you know, uh, been rewarded to success very well, and there seems to be a lot of uh, opportunities to move forward. Um, I'd already decided that even though I had an undergraduate degree, I wanted to go back to business school to take my master's degree. So, kind of that, you know, I had had my mind set on, uh, you know, working for about four years before I would do that. In actual fact, I saved up all my bonuses and part of my salary to fund myself through, uh, through business school. And I, I actually stayed there for five years. That's pretty phenomenal. So now kind of um, fast-tracking your career path. After HP, you went to Cranfield uh, University from 86 to 89, got your master's, yep. and then... No, no, one, one, so uh, uh, a one, a one pound a year master's degree at business school. True. Five years. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. And then you spent... I'm just going to shoot through these. Three years at Bank of America, four yep. years at Motorola, in yep. IBM 10 years, two in Europe, yep. eight in the U.S., yep. a string of things such as Saxio Tech, Patney, Avotis, and then yep. you've been at Alemica for five years where you've stayed the same position. Yes. So that's quite a big, I feel like that's quite a, a, a long variety of different jobs. Is that because... Yep. Opportunities just kept approaching them, uh, just kept showing them to you. Well, opportunities did keep approaching me. So the first, the first thing to note, Jack, is that if you work in a very stable industry where where change is, you know, very modest, you know, change is very slowly, then generally speaking, you may not get many career opportunities or many many opportunities to move ahead. Mm -hmm. If you work in an industry like I do, which is in the soft, the high technology, the software industry. The industry itself, because the technology changes so incredibly rapidly, then um, there's a lot of organizational change on a constant basis. There's a saying within my industry, you know, the only thing that is constant is change. And, and that's been absolutely been, been the case with uh, with me and my, my, uh, my industry. So somebody from a different industry, which is more, shall we say, slow-moving or conservative, would probably view that I've had a significant number of job changes both within the you know functional areas as well as uh, a, a, as well as companies but it's not unusual within the technology industry to find folks who get ahead by um, i wouldn't say moving every year but certainly every few years um it is one thing the second thing is you know what i you know in, in order to um get to a very senior position it, uh, particularly within technology it's important to have a lot of exposure or as much exposure to different jobs in different functional areas. So I've worked within finance, within corporate finance, within M&A, within marketing, within product marketing, with sales as well as general management. And so when I, in an early stage of my career, I wanted to change jobs into a different function uh, you know, on a pretty regular basis so I could get a breadth of experience in very different jobs. And that's what I did. I started in uh, in sales, sales support actually. Then I went into product marketing. I stayed in product marketing for a while. Then I went into sales management. Then I went into finance, which was a very, very big switch. Then I went into corporate development, etc. So you can see I was getting exposure to different ways of, of looking at business and looking at companies and how to analyze and, uh, and uh, Drive business forward. So just kind of to tangent off a bunch of the things you said, you actually hit on a lot of the points I wanted to talk about, but the one we'll knock out first is um, mergers and acquisitions. I know yes. you were part of an M&A quite recently. I know Elemica was acquired in 2016 by a yep. private equity firm named Tomo Brava. Yep. So with mergers and acquisitions, with people coming in and sort of a changing of the guard, have you seen that being a part of so many kind of mergers and acquisitions, that's a big way that kind of high-level executives get switched in and out of roles. 